Well, welcome to the Stone Roadie Podcast. It's the one you don't want to miss. It stars Craig Reed, the Stone Roadie, and Griff, the Rocket Scientist. Let's not forget Kathy Godsey and all the old friends that come along. Lord, we'll be a talking skinner and leaving you with a song. Good morning, everybody. Time to rise and shine. I'm Shelby Barrett, the Stone Up for the Stone Roadie Show, and it's time to wake and bake with Craig Reed and Griff Martin. It's the Stone Roadie Show, podcast 179. Wake and Bake the Morning Buzz, episode number 60. How about that? And it's Friday, Friday morning, and it's uh, June 7th, 2024. And uh, action. Well, good morning, fellow Earthlings. Looky here, looky here. And my name's Craig Reed, a.k.a. the Stone Roadie. And this is my co-host, the rocket scientist, Griff Martin. And hey, we got a dang drawing giveaway here this morning there, Griff. So, oh, yeah. yeah, this is uh, giveaway day on a Stone Roadie show every Friday this, this spring. And uh, yeah, what else the heck we got going on there, Griff? Well, you got some kind of a weird shit going on behind you there on your screen screen about a, <laughs> a pile of rocks and a sheriff car <laughs> <laughs> well i don't remember i don't know maybe some of you remember maybe last year i had the woman that was intoxicated on drugs and the, the police had her in that same driveway after she she went through that that whole stack of rocks there and went down through right where the police car ends and in between that guardrail and she went through there with her car and i went down to my out of my driveway uh, yesterday morning and uh, my mailbox was on the on the ground it's there behind me you can't see it but i and uh so i um uh, I, I thought, oh, God, because they, they van, vandals do that. It looked like somebody hit it on purpose. So I called the sheriff. I thought, man, somebody hit that great big rock there. It might have hurt, hurt their car. May might have had trouble up the road. So I, you know, called the sheriff, and uh, he come by and looked at it. So I, I took a picture of him. But uh, later on that day, the lady, the lady showed up, and she said, I, I pulled in your driveway and I backed up and the cars were coming. I put it in gear and I, and I thought I had room and I took down your mailbox. But she hit that great big rock there at the end. But uh, yeah, she hit it pretty good. <laughs> and you said it was like, uh, uh, how much damage is it? Well, she she said, "Can I give you a hundred dollars for damage?" I said, "Lady." That's a thousand dollar mailbox. I said, "Give me your name and number," and I, I said, "I'll call the." I'll, I, I I hadn't even looked at it, but there's some brackets on that are they're bent and broken, and uh, and um, yeah, just the part, just the parts to replace it are three hundred and fifty. Well, with the shipping, and everything it's three hundred and fifty dollars just for the parts to repair it. That post needs rep replaced. It, it, there's brackets that go in there, and she stripped out the stripped out the threads and ru ruined the door on the front of it. And yeah, it's funny. Then you're gonna <laughs> have to get some uh, Emmanuel labor to move the rocks to put the post in. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah, twice in two years, somebody's taken down my mailbox. It's probably the most expensive mailbox in the city of Green, and <laughs> somebody. <laughs> hey, no, I see a mailbox back there in the distance, and and, and that thing's in nice shape, a little plastic one. Yeah, everybody lines up on that nice, pricey one, don't they? 
<laughs> I actually have two of them exactly the same, except one of them green and one of them white. And I use the green one in the winter time, so when the snow plows come by, they hit that one, and then I use the white one in the summertime. And I just put it out there, you know, because it's white and gets dirty and stuff. But I just put it out there a couple weeks ago, and somebody hit it. So now I'm gonna get a new one. <laughs> Man, well. <laughs> Well, at yeah. least so that's the picture. Her. That's the picture of the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was asking Greg. I said, "Why are you putting that old picture up of that you know, the cop car out there when when the lady was doing the uh, sobriety test in your driveway?" He goes, "No, that's a brand new." Picture. That was yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we uh, had a lot of uh, people talking about uh, having Craig's ex wife on, and uh, there was a lot of great comments. And then we got comments coming from the uh, podcast before that, one seventy seven. And we've been so we, a lot of po comments. I've been yeah, reading a lot so, of. Them. God so we got. We got a lot of comments to go over and then uh, a little update on my buddy, Jay, he got out of the hospital. A lot of all those prayers must have worked because they didn't find anything wrong with his heart when they went in with and heart casting, but, um, there's, he's got a, a, um, appointment with his cardiologist to find out what's going on, but he seems to be doing okay. And, um, and thanks, uh, for all the uh, well wishes for him. And, um, Got another uh, donation there, Craig? Javier. Javier Medina sent us another 25 bucks. So he sent us 50 before, but he he stays in contact. He he sends me music and and uh and he sent me a whole he's an artist too. He sent some sent some artwork for me to use as as giveaways. I'm gonna have to go through it and see well how we'll do that and Sent me a bunch of artwork. I appreciate it there, Javier. But yeah, he sent us in a, another another uh, 25 bucks. So he didn't send in 75 so far. And I keep one of these um, these pay, these these things that I show when somebody gives us somebody gives us any money. I make one of these sheets out like this, and these are all in a file. So all the money anybody's ever given us are on one of these sheets in a file, and I just. You know, it's easy for me to count up how much people have uh, have donated, and here when I figure that up and send it out, I'll I'll acknowledge everybody and how much they uh, donated, and then see if see if the tallies figure up to what we got and what we sending out. So you know, yeah, that's, you know. still having donations trickling in, which are great. Yeah, we just yeah, but I, I, oh yeah, we got that. Uh, Got a couple of things that you know we could we could still sell to uh, auction off. Uh, Cousin Fight. Uh, well, no. Uh, uh, this uh, vest. Yeah, my nephew sent this vest. This is a that vest. Uh, see, it's a. Uh, uh, Bill Blass, yeah, it's a Bill Blass, but it's signed by Billy Powell there. But it's a. Uh, it says to Joe. Yeah, it's to Joe. Best wishes, it's a nice Billy vest, Powell. Though. It's a nice designer vest, which is a, a small. Nice but it's a small, but it would probably fit somebody that's a, you know, medium. Is it? You know, I'll have to try it on and see if how how. It I looks like a it. big small. Yeah, it is. It is. It looks like a big small. I'll have to get with my nephew and see if we can come up with a more of a story. My nephew works out there at that rehab place where Billy Billy checked in out there and went through rehab out there, and uh, and uh, he my nephew's out there and he was. Uh, just commenting that his uncle worked for Leonard Skitter and that guy goes, man, Billy Powell, the piano player, went through a program out here. And uh, then they knew that, you know, we were doing this uh, this uh, donation thing, so they donated that, that uh, for us to, to sell and uh, donate the money, you know. So that's how that became about. So we got that. But uh, and then he sent the T-shirt. We sold the T-shirt to... Uh, uh, Steve Jones for two fifty, and then he bought another 
t-shirt that's uh, uh, no Steve Jones sent the shirts in <laughs> who bought the t-shirts oh uh, John yeah John uh, Hart Hartline yeah 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 for him and his wife him and his wife Dawn I think boy you're testing my memory on the well, day that's pretty good though you're doing you're doing good Craig. this morning is pretty early to test my morning this morning <laughs> Of course, you know, on awake and bake, you know, I got that morning buzz. You know, you're testing me this morning. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got the drawing uh, after we have our little comment thing, but um, I kind of like uh, wanted to start off the podcast and switch gears with um, a little something that I think that would be kind of cool. And um, it's. I, I want to kind of like dissect, uh, the song, what's your name? And, you know, we kind of never really did that. That song that's written by, uh, Ronnie and, uh, and Gary about, uh, it's basically about Craig and, um, uh, you know, that's a, a pretty cool thing to, to have, uh, Ronnie Van Zant write a song that's got, that's got, uh, Craig Reed in mind. Um, and I, I checked it out on Wikipedia and, uh, what's really cool about it is it's the first song on the album street survivors. Um, and it peaked at 13 on the billboard charts. Did you know that Craig did not know that? Uh, -uh. yeah. Yeah. So that's a pretty, a pretty history. That's pretty healthy. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty, pretty healthy song, and and I yeah. did, and that was written by uh, Ronnie Van Zant and uh, Gary Rossington, um, and also um, it the producer was Tom Dowd, and Booker T and the MGs with guitarist Steve Cropper. Did you know? Did you know that, Craig? No, uh -uh. Steve Cropper. Uh uh which, uh, I don't know. I didn't know anything about that. I don't even know who Steve Cropper is, uh, other than, um, um, you know, th that is said that in Wikipedia, which I, I didn't, uh, I didn't Google him or anything. So I, I figured I'd just ask Craig and maybe he knew, um, the, uh, the song lyric, it says in Wikipedia, it depict a life on the road and uh with of the band and one of the verses is based on a true story of the band drinking at the hotel bar when one of their roadies got into a fight they got kicked out of the bar went into another room and ordered champagne is that is that true craig <laughs> <coughs> all i remember <clears throat> about the thing was I was coming home, coming in from a gig. Uh, we, uh, the band got there before we did because I was with the crew. So I got back to the hotel and it was like, you know, when I get back to the hotel after a, after a loadout, I'd stop by the bar just to see what was going on and who was in there, you know, and, and drop off my stuff up to my room and then come back to the down to the bar. So I just was going into the bar to see what was going on and Ronnie walked up to me and and uh, had a, uh, his arm around some woman and had a bottle of whiskey in one hand and a woman in the other hand and put $200 in my shirt pocket and they said, go take care of my light work in there. Somebody's messing with me and I ain't got time. I'm, 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 I'm busy here. I don't want to, you know, I got plans, you know, so I ain't got time to mess with that. Go take care of my light work. So... You want me to go in there and beat that guy up at the bar that said something to him? So what did he do? Point at the guy that was messing with him? He just go, showed me who it was, there. yeah. And then he, and he just walked up back up to his room, and then he heard about what happened. And then so what? What did you do him. after he? After did you I just went there? in there? I just went in there, um, sat beside the guy in the bar, and just started messing with him. And then we got, like I said before, it was. It was over really before it really ever started, but you know they just figured we, like Gary said, they figured we were all just a bunch of long-haired rednecks, and they so they just throwed us all out before anything else started. You know, we got into it a little bit, but you know it wasn't no, you know it got stopped before. It wasn't like an really all-out brawl. No, it wasn't like a regular Leonard Skinner bar fight. You know, it was just me and some guy had a 
had a tussle and they they knew I was with Skitter and it was just after it got all broke up, a guy said, "All oh, you people just get out of here," <laughs> you know. So that's all it was. It was like like everything else, everything highly exaggerated. More of these, a lot of these stories are highly exaggerated. So did you did you go into another room and then <laughs> and then just? Oh God, you... yeah, probably. Yeah, we probably all went upstairs and drank booze. Yeah, we we and, didn't bother uh, us any. We had liquor in other places, you know, Dean. Dean always had a thing set up, you know, we just go down to the bar where there's a little more entertainment, you know, but, uh, yeah. Well now it, it, uh, supposedly happened in Boise, Idaho, which is not true. Um, yeah. Which, that, Artemis says it happened in North Carolina somewhere. I, I couldn't tell you where it happened to tell you the truth. Well, uh, Ronnie's but, brother, just, Donnie, uh, actually, opened up in 38 special there and ronnie decided just to throw boise idaho in there because it sounded good but the name of the place that had happened was actually where where uh donnie and 38 special were going to open up on on a tour and he didn't want it to conflict with that so that's what it says in wikipedia oh really no yeah artemis i think i think artemis said it was in north carolina somewhere i don't know I can look it up in my itinerary and <laughs> and figure it out. Yeah, I could figure now, it out. Now, whenever, it, it so in. they were in Miami when they recorded that. When, when did you first find out that there was a song being written that had something that happened that had something to do with you? They had played that song live, uh, God, for a, a while before they ever that was one of those test songs that they you know they knew it was a kind of a good song so they played it they played it they, they, ronnie would say here's one for our new album and then they would play that one they played they played that for probably that a uh, tour before we ever recorded that so it was i knew about that song pretty early were they talking about Craig, you know, this is when, you know, we were in so-and-so and this is what happened in the bar there. And, and did you know it? Was no, uh, that, none, none of that ever really came out until after the plane crash. And they were, they were asking Gary and uh, him and Alan did a, a radio interview and, uh, and they said, Gary, tell us about the song. What's your name? And Gary said, Oh, one of our guy crew guys, Craig Reed, he got in a fight with some guy in the bar, and they figured we were all a bunch of long-haired rednecks, so they throw this all out, you know. So, you know. So, I guess like a lot of the other stuff, you know, like Curtis Lowe, there wasn't really a, a Curtis Lowe, um, but you know, you just kind of adapt to things that happen to you into a song and and kind of make it you know a little more interesting that way but uh, still you know i think even i think even artemis says that the way the the way that story goes down isn't the way it happened that <laughs> i don't that uh i don't i don't know i don't know i don't can't i can't relate it i just something reminds it ticked in there that Artemis said that that's not actually exactly the way all that went down. Like I said, all that stuff was highly exaggerated, <laughs> you know, but uh, that did happen, you know, that, you know, the way Gary said it, you know, I went into the bar and got in a little tussle with this guy and they throwed us all out. That all happened, but. Do you know where uh, Gary and Ronnie were when they wrote that song? No, uh, prob they probably went up to their room after we got, well, no, Ronnie was busy, so probably the next day or something. <laughs> that sound check, they, you know, they used to do sound checks and write songs. They, you know, they were, they were coming up for this next album, you know, so they were, you know, they were, they were thinking about, you know, they needed to have a real dy dynamic album. This next album needed to be kick ass. So they, they wrote they were writing on the road and you know especially when they got steve they were really writing on the road you know 
Well, they must have been really pleased when they found out that it topped 13 on the billboard charts. And I think it even did better in Canada, even maybe. But uh, I remember back when that song came out, you know, I, I mean, I, I remember vividly when that song came out. Well, just about every song in that album's a hit. I mean, really. Yeah. I mean, you hear yeah. them all, they're. You know, they, you know, they're almost all like singles nowadays, you know, they're all almost like a hit, you know, all those. And songs there was a, an like interview a with, uh, Billy Powell and Gary Rossington were talking about when they were shooting the, uh, the album cover and they actually had real fire. And Gene told me that he was there and he said that fire was scaring the shit out of Gary. Yeah, every, every time, time it, it hit that, it was hot. I guess I go, yeah. and he, Gary, it was like you know, you know, and Gary would, you know, kind of back off like that, and then and they had to keep reshooting, and they, I guess that from what I heard, but yeah, yeah they every had time the fire it hit department. It, Gary go, it was like the heat was really intense. I guess. Yeah, and they had the fire department standing by in case it was out of control, and he said it's just like a Hollywood set. You know, and then they couldn't even use it. I mean, they, you know, they had to take it off of the, the off of the album because it was just too macabre to be having that after the plane crash. Um, so yeah. Okay. Very interesting, Craig. That was, uh, you know, something that we've never really gone over extensively, um, which, uh, is more skin formation for the people that want to know and there you have it so uh we'll go we'll start going over these comments um uh my podcast i guess uh two podcasts ago when we started because we had uh craig's ex-wife on on the last podcast um which was really cool uh, we had a lot of great comments about her but the one before that we haven't even discussed yet so uh We'll go back and talk about that. Um, uh, one thing I found out, you know, our um, one uh, person user that in the comments all the time, I found out is actually a woman. And I used to, that's another, <laughs> that's another person I call a dude, you know, and it's another woman. Uh, <laughs> and uh, she uh, was laughing. She goes, great show and we were going through uh those uh all those magnets that dave the disciples sent she said she spit out her coffee when you're going through those when we were going through those fat shaming quotes on all those magnets and <laughs> uh and she's a big fan craig of your uh of your uh fasting uh diet there she says the fasting is uh it really works for people you know uh, that are insulin resistant and it gives the body time to rest um she uh i guess uh uh struggled with a little bit with her weight and uh and so you know i think she's a big fan of the of the uh fat shaming diet which uh, i think she commented in here a little bit later uh too um Autumn, the chick Honaker. Craig, do you remember the girl that jumped on the stage to kiss Ronnie in Johnson City, Tennessee in 1977? I was there. Well, I bet that happened a lot, but I don't know if you remember that particular incident, Craig. Um, There were quite a few women that I escorted <laughs> off of. I was the one that always went out and... I was always real gentle with them, you know, and just kind of laughed and just, you know, got them and, you know, and just kind of escorted them off. You know, I wasn't never <clears throat> uh, rough on any of them, you know. I just went Was out. he usually pretty cool would, about yeah, it? Yeah, they would just go out and and grab onto Ronnie and I'd just kind of gotta get him and just kind of go, come on, let's go, and <laughs> escort him off stage. They were always cool about it. You know, so you never had time. I just take them backstage and they just stay back there. <laughs> they ended up back to the hotel. <laughs> yeah. I tell you one thing that I'll tell you about, and I think I can go ahead and say it now that, um, I forget her name, 
but um gary had a kind of like a stalker um i think i was friends with her on facebook and if she's listening it's actually a black lady and she loves her some damn gary rossington now <laughs> and uh and i think there were times she was kind of like uh pissing off uh you know, Gary's wife, Dale, you know, she was getting so out of control with it, but, but that girl, man, she was like after Gary, I forget her name. Uh, you know, I, I think there might be somebody that that's listening on here that can, that can relate to that. I don't know if you really want to put her name on there or anything, embarrass her, but, uh, she was really after Gary and she did not care what anybody thought about it either. Uh, but she, yeah, she really loved Gary. I don't um, even remember her. Yeah, she she's kind of like uh recent not too not she might even, you know, have been like She must have been after me cuz oh, I, yeah, I, I left thought, in so, 70. Yeah. I yeah, left she, in 2005, 2000. Cuz she was there when I saw him in um yeah. 21. I, I don't believe remember it was her. in in uh in Dallas, uh Texas. Um when I, uh, when I, uh, went there and, uh, uh, Johnny Van Zant's, uh, mother-in-law got me backstage, Susan, uh, sweet lady, God rest her soul. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, she, she was such a great lady and she, and she got me backstage there and I got to meet Gary and, and all the guys in the band, but, uh, that, that black girl was causing a ruckus then too. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, uh, that just goes to show you, you know, everybody, white, black, I don't care, you know, what race you are, loves Leonard Skinner. Um, you know, they're very popular. Uh, Craig, on podcast number 174, you mentioned um, taking Barbie Benton's limo to the hotel. You said Wrigley Field. Are you sure it wasn't Soldier Field? No, it was the baseball stadium. I thought that might have been. You know, I yeah, because oh, this person says here that uh, Wrigley Field wasn't used for concerts. They didn't have concerts in Wrigley Wrigley Field. Well, so. he might be correct. Yeah, it could have been. I just remember it was Chicago in Chicago. He could be right. Yeah, yeah. you well, know, you know. That, that that this is the Stone Rodeo show. You know, I'm. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I make mistakes. You know. Well, that's why we have the it comes, uh, comments. It comes with the territory, you know. That's why we have the comments because these, these <laughs> this is all about skin formation corrected, skin formation not corrected, and we appreciate all the people that comment. Uh, um, here's another uh, triple R triple T one twelve asked. Why didn't Ed King join Rossington Collins band? Oh, well, that was Gary and Alan and, uh, and Barry Harwood. I mean, Alan wanted Barry Harwood. Um, uh, I don't know. Maybe they were still hacked off at Ed about all an ass or something, you know? Well, Alan, Alan and Barry were always real good friends. I don't know. Yeah. Barry was a hell of a guitar player. Plus, Barry was a good songwriter too, and a good singer. Yeah, yeah. And maybe they wanted something fresh, you know. And Barry was right there too. I mean, Barry lived in Jacksonville, and Ed was, you know, other places. Yeah. Which I'm glad you know, it's it, it convenient. It, maybe, maybe if Ed would have been there, you know, just convenience, you know. And maybe they didn't want it to be so much like Leonard Skinner. You know, they had Derek Hess and then Barry Lee and then Dale. Well, so. Barry, Barry and Alan were good friends. I mean, me and me and Alan and Gary, uh, Barry Harwood partied together a lot, a lot. That was that was me and Gary, me and Barry and Alan were there when I, we were doing acid, and, and that was when I. Thought that the, the the lamp in Alan's room was melting. I thought it was a lava lamp. <laughs> I said, Alan, I didn't know that was a lava lamp. He said, it's not. 
<laughs> See, that's a new one I haven't heard. <laughs> a few days later, I was up here. I was, wow, that's really not a lava lamp. <laughs> uh, why was it just the lamp that was melting? Why wasn't it? In I don't melting? know. I just saw that lamp was melting. <laughs> I just done a big hit. Maybe that's probably why he said, are you okay? I, yeah, I'm right. <laughs> well, how come, <laughs> how come it wasn't melting for Alan too? I mean, <laughs> uh, oh, BBS one sixty nine. any Billy Joe Shaver stories, you know, who I don't he know is? who he is. He actually uh, played with Waylon Jennings and Chris Christopherson and the Allman Brothers. So I guess this no, is a I'm fan of uh, Joe Shaver, and uh, he's probably just wanting to know if you had had any stories. Uh, you know, Craig, he was around a lot of musicians, man. You know, and he's he was on acid, so you can't remember everything. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I was never starstruck, so I didn't really pay. It. You know, I you know I knew a few of them were around, but. I didn't really pay a lot. Well, he might not have been famous back then, and maybe he became yeah. famous later, you know? I mean, the first person I met was John Lennon. I mean, God, how do you how do you find people famous? That You know, John Lennon and Jack Nicholson, and, you know, I started right at the top. Everybody else were just a bunch of peons. <laughs> right, yeah. And, you know, you were at Ringo's house. <laughs> yeah, you know. So. Hell, you know, Al Cooper was our producer, and, we were doing an album with the e all the eagles and that was just when i first started my god we were i met a lot of people when we first started jeez yeah and i think uh the guys in leonard skinner when they first met you were kind of questioning you to, to to see if you even knew any of their songs and you were kind of like well not really <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know i didn't know you know i think yeah. i remember you know like uh you know free bird and you know i think <clears throat> You know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's pretty funny. Um, here, here's another one. Maybe you don't know, Craig. Um, R H asked to have Craig tell the story when Ronnie fell into the audience while trying to pick up a joint happened because his pants were too tight. <laughs> You know, I don't really recall that particular incident. I really <laughs> you don't, don't remember Ronnie falling into the audience? Um, kind of, but I don't remember. I just kind of remember it, yeah. I remember when I was uh, visiting with Gene, and we were at that. That's the same, the same day that that guy that I had those T-shirts at that restaurant uh, stump knockers in Inverness, and, I, and we had all those T-shirts laid out, and then that – that big fat guy says, Hey, I'd like to have one of those t-shirts. And Gene said, man, buddy, we ain't got your size. And Gene, <laughs> and Gene goes, you know, Gene says, I ain't got, he ain't got the guy goes, were you trying to say I'm fat? <laughs> but, uh, he was telling me that he, no, you Ronnie, forgot the rest of the story. The guys, they, uh, he asked Gene for a shirt and Gene said, yeah, he ain't don't have your size. And the guy said, are you trying to say I'm fat? And Gene right. said, no, you're the one that said you were <laughs> right. fat. I just said, I don't have your size. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what happened. <laughs> you I didn't want to tell, one the, up, I didn't yeah, want to tell what... the whole story again. Cause I just told it not too long ago. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, are you saying I'm fat? No, you said you're fat. I just said I don't have your size. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> That's great. And he was uh, <laughs> he was telling me that uh, he said to uh, Ronnie, not too long before the plane crash, he said, Ronnie, he said, you, you need to bump up another uh, waist size, man. You're getting fat. And Ronnie, <laughs> and Ronnie, Ronnie said, well, he says, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. It all turns to Peter at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, those two guys, I guess when they got together, he also told me, he said that Ronnie was quite a gentleman. You know, he didn't really, uh, start any crap with anybody. And he just loved to hear Gene start crap with people and laugh at Gene. That's why he liked to, <laughs> he liked to hang. Cause Gene will start some crap. Now he, 
he will start some crap with some people. And Bonnie he, was a gentleman. He really was. Yeah. Yeah. He, he said that uh, he really was. Yeah. He wasn't a smart ass to people or anything. And that, you know, like if somebody came up to him and was kind of a smart aleck, he, he, he was nice to him. Um, all of his interviews, was, all of his interviews, he's always you know, <laughs> like quiet, you know, a quiet, you know, kind of yeah. reserved and, you know, kind of just soft spoken, you know, um, Tim Fawcett asked, does jibber jabber mean the same as ratchet jawing? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Ratchet <laughs> jawing, jibber jabber. <laughs> yeah, this is not really so much jibber jabber here, but, uh, jibber jabber is just kind of like when Craig and I go off into another area about <laughs> stuff like jibber jabber, like telling about the Gene Odom story. That's jibber jabber. <laughs> These are answering comments and questions. Uh, I but, guess uh, ratchet John's a little harsher than jibber jabber. Yeah. <laughs> jibber jabber, something Craig made up. Actually, I never really listened listened to any jibber jabber before until uh, Craig. That might be Yankee doing... terminology. I don't. Know. <laughs> yeah, probably is. Uh, <laughs> Angela cut Leonard. All the jibber jabber. I heard that somewhere. Somebody used to say, "Cut all the jibber jabber." Yeah, I've have heard jibber jabber before. Eh? Angela yeah. Leonard says, uh, congrats to Jack West on the drawing and prayers to all the folks in the hospital, which have you heard about Brian Gibbons lately? Is he out of the hospital? Chris? Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he called me, uh, uh, a couple nights ago. I, uh, yeah. A couple nights ago called and said he was, uh, recovering. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I guess, uh, that he, that... he could feel a definite that, yeah, they took, some of that bone out of his neck. He said he could definitely feel the difference. He said, yeah, I said, thanks for the, thanks for the, uh, prayers and, the, and, the condolences. Or, that guy's been through hell, man, He's man. I'll tell dude. you any kind of spot. I'm lucky. I don't have any spinal stuff or anything like that. Yeah. I'm telling yeah, I had I back surgery. That. So that back surgery sucks, man. I now Gene, he had rods put on both sides of his back, up his spine. And then a week later, he's on his way up to see Dave Musgrove, uh, you know, up in New Jersey or uh, Boston or wherever Dave lives. And uh, I'm like, Gene, man, I go, don't you think you ought to wait a little while before you jump in the car? And and it was cold up there. And I think, you know, he, he had some issues. He still had the back brace on actually when he went up there. That guy's a maniac. I'm telling you, man. Um, uh, uh Autumn, the chick Honaker, another one who I used to think was a dude, but it's a chick. Oh, uh, <laughs> she, she would love to hear some more stories about Lacey and sister. You got any, you got anything, uh, anything about Lacey and sister? Oh Craig? God, no, uh, boy, Chad would be the one to, to ask about Lacey and sister. He spent a lot of time with them. I, I was over there and ate dinner a couple of times. You know, I didn't hang around with Lacey and sister a whole bunch. Lacey, yeah. I did, you know, when Lacey came out on tour with us, but not a lot with Lacey and sister together, you know? Just were you ever over there like when Donnie and Johnny and Ronnie were there all together? I was that me and Ronnie were there and his sister Darlene and Lacey and, and sister were there from what I remember. It was just Ronnie and Darlene and uh, maybe Johnny. Johnny Johnny was probably there because that was like early. So Johnny would have only been like 13 maybe. <laughs> when was the last time you were at the Van Zandt house? The last time I was there? Yeah. Oh, you mean when, when they were alive? No, I mean the, the, the very last time recently. Were you there recently? Well, yeah, I was there last year. Wasn't it's, I there it, with you too? You and I were there at the yeah, same time. Yeah, it's totally, you know, it's totally changed now. Though. Yeah. Was the, uh, was the dining it's room in the, like it used to be. No. Yeah. How about the dining room in the kitchen? Was that the same? It's really hard for me to, to, to remember it. Yeah. It, it's all. I, I can't visualize it right now, but it's all different. Yeah. yeah it's it was, the same it was, cabinets in there. I know that the same cabinets and sink. It was, it was just a, it was small. I mean, it was, you know, yeah, you know, it was, you know, I, I can visualize it in my head, but the way it is now, it's totally different. 
and so that was in the seventies and Ron and Ronnie was, he moved out of there like in the sixties, like the early sixties. Uh, right. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not yeah. Sure. Cause he got married pretty young. So he, Gene told me he, he, he left out of that place a long time ago. He didn't go visit, but he wasn't he, living. He there. wasn't, he wasn't living there when he was selling auto parts then, huh? No, no, I don't know. Uh -uh. And I, and I think sister, uh, was working at the Dunkin Donuts, uh, for a long time, even after, um, they became pretty famous and they'd already had a few albums. She kept on working down at the coffee place and, from what I understand. And, uh, uh, yeah. And, uh, she just wanted to keep working. So, I don't remember sister working. No, I don't remember that. <clears throat> yeah. And I then, you know, I guess Lacey ever working either. Lacey went on tour with you guys. He was on the bus. Oh yeah. A, yeah. A lot. Yeah. Right. And I remember, oh, yeah. uh, one video where the bus broke down and Lacey was hanging out the window and it was hot as hell. And, Oh he yeah, he a, was on a couple of U.S. tours. He was on that. He went all over the road, all over the world. Did a world tour with us, yeah. And uh, speaking of uh, Donnie and Ronnie and Johnny, uh, Rock On would like to know: Were you at any concerts where Donnie sang with Ronnie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, I'm sure that I'm sure Donnie went came out and sang with Ronnie a couple times during sang harmony with him. Yeah, yeah, I remember seeing. I don't some remember stuff. particular incidents, but I'm sure it happened. You know, I can remember it happening, but I don't remember. Seemed like it was Winterland. I don't remember particular incidents, but yeah, it happened. Yeah, it happened often actually. Probably every time we ever uh played together they they probably sang together on on alabama or something like that probably alabama you know um i guess uh johnny and donnie they they get together sometimes and i mean i know that they write music they write uh um all kinds of religious songs and things uh together but um i think when they're on tour sometimes donnie will come and get up there and sing with johnny i think i've seen some videos um of that um moving along here laura johnson today is my 40th anniversary the fat jokes made my day you should have <laughs> a fat shaming day every monday <laughs> we, should, we could do fat monday you know fat monday it's fat tuesday ain't it uh, well we, we're yeah but we're not doing fat you know, fat monday <laughs> yeah we're, we're call it fat monday because everybody's all bloated and fat from the weekend <laughs> but we got to get on their ass right and <laughs> <laughs> make them feel bad when their pants are all tight on the way to work <laughs> I could do a I could do a fat Tuesday, just do a Tuesday show and just talk about fat people. I could do that pretty easy. <laughs> That'd be a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah we could do we could do like uh, uh maybe <laughs> once a month a, a fat Tuesday special, <laughs> kind of like Tuesday. a <laughs> yeah. like a Saturday night special, but a fat Tuesday yeah. special. We'll have to do one here to come in next though. Mardi Gras for Fat Tuesday when the February comes around. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, we'll have to do a Fat Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Laura. You just started something up. There you up. go, yeah. Either Craig's going to make somebody commit suicide or he's going to save their <laughs> life. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, Crazy Bob says, great job uh, on the magnets there, Dave. You sure pay attention. Yeah, you know, he does. I mean, when he was coming up with some of this stuff that that I was reading, I was like, Greg, did you say that? And Greg's like, oh, yeah, I said that, you know. <laughs> I mean, uh, I do remember the one that says, uh, it's nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. He kind of <laughs> messed that up a little bit. But uh, Craig's been saying that a long time ago. Nothing tastes as good as skinny feels, which – that does kind of make sense if you think about it, right? I mean, <laughs> it it feels a lot better being skinny than it than it does 
being fat, I mean, would you rather taste than feel skinny? I mean, feel fat and it'd be better to feel skinny. I think so. Um, uh, user says, uh, her sister, which now that we know she's a, a lady, her sister passed away a year ago, which I, I know how you feel there. User mine passed away a year ago too, a little over a year ago. She says I was her caregiver. My own health started to go down and the Craig Reed fat shaming diet helped me. <laughs> Craig, you're turning into a regular Richard Simmons, man. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, crazy. Have, Kimmy. That's my, that's my special purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> Kimmy wants to know, cause we said somebody mentioned, uh, you need to get uh, Crazy Kimmy and Timmy on. And and then I was making a joke. I said, you know, something about uh, what do you think? Crazy Kimmy's like Timmy? And then she wants to know, who's Timmy? <laughs> Timmy. <laughs> I have no idea where Timmy is. Yeah. Yeah, you have to. Get, yeah. I wonder what number podcast that was. If anybody's uh, watching that knows – Oh, what number podcast that was help crazy Kimmy out so she can go back and look at that and <laughs> get pissed off. <laughs> Timmy was a homeless guy. I picked up outside the, the giant Eagle pharmacy. <laughs> didn't brought you him home, brought him home and did a podcast with him. They yeah, gave but, him some money and took him to a truck stop and dropped him off. He said he could get a ride. I gave him some money. It was cold. Did you, he did you, out of jail. Uh, he was drunk. <laughs> go home and do a live on facebook and then i put it on the podcast or how did that work i i went yeah i came home and recorded it yeah i couldn't i couldn't get it to to work and uh and uh finally recorded it and then we put it on yeah yeah stone roadie to memphis <laughs> <laughs> he was a, he was a hoot Maybe, you know what? Maybe one day he'll come back and he'll be all skinny and he'll go, Craig, man, you saved my life. <laughs> Cause he was a big dude. He was the, he was good. He wanted to have, but he wanted to have, uh, bits of biscuits and gravy. And there was a, uh, waffle house down, down by the thing. And I was going to go down there and have biscuits and gravy with him. <laughs> And he saw the truck stop. He goes, oh, I'd rather have him at the truck stop. He goes, and I can get a ride from the truck stop. I goes, all right, well, I'll just give you money, and you can go in there and get you some biscuits and gravy and get, get you a ride then. I'll talk to you. See you on down the road. <laughs> Didn't you say you were going to get him a jacket, but you couldn't find one to fit or something? He was a the trip four extra large. My God. Yeah, that guy was huge. And he had bloody knuckles. Like he just, uh, yeah, he just jail. been in a fight. Yeah. He was a four extra large, but he was a nice guy. Oh, he, he really, was a great guy. Yeah. Yeah. He was, I mean, he could have been a, like a, he could have wrung your neck, man. He was so big, but, <laughs> but he liked you. You know, <laughs> he was drinking he kind was of cool. liquor. What was he drinking? Yeah, he was hit. He had him a, a, a stash of beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking when Craig, Craig sent that to me, I was like, Jesus Christ, man, that would have been, that would have been something if he was a mean drunk, but he was a happy drunk. Uh, luckily, <laughs> um, Mike neighbors wants to know. Craig, what is obese? I'm six feet tall and I weigh 196 pounds. Six foot 196? Yeah. Well, I'm six foot and I'm 165. So I don't know. Um, 30, 35, clinically, is 30, 35 pounds over over a, a normal weight, whatever a normal weight for you is on your chart. If you're 35 pounds over that weight, you're obese. Well, let's just look yeah, at it like this. Craig is probably underweight by 10 pounds. So. No, I'm right at, I'm, I'm supposed to be like 172, somewhere under there. I'm, I'm uh, five or so pounds underweight. Yeah, that's all. Well, he's right on the cusp. So, 
So, but he says he's lost. He's lost 50 pounds. So he's trying to. Well, yeah, out. he was obese. Yeah, yeah. So he's trying to figure if out you, where he needs to go. If you him. lost that, when you lose 50 pounds, you were obese. Yeah. He was, but he's not now. That's what he's trying to figure out. Am I still uh, okay. obese? 35 pounds over your normal, what, 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 what your normal weight is. If you're 35 pounds over your normal weight, that's considered obese. That's what the chart says. Well, Mike, drop another 10 and, uh, <laughs> and you'll be for sure good to go, man. And then just have a piece of pie every now and then and you'll be <laughs> all right, man. You know, I'm sure that you feel a lot better because, you know, 50 pounds carrying. That's a, a lot, man. Yeah. man. 50 pounds is a lot of weight. Yeah. Go to Lowe's and grab a, a sack of concrete, a 50 pound. A 50 oh pound, my God. Yeah. Imagine yeah. And try to carry around. that to your car. Even 20 pounds is a lot, man. Yeah. God, it is. And 20, you think, think how that's doing your spine. That's making your back. It's killing your back. Yeah, I mean, just carry 20 pounds around with you all day. I, you, you know, try, strap, strap 10 pounds of weight on each one of your ankles and walk around all day. You'll feel it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> David Rice says it's... Uh, it wasn't Gary's horse that was crazy. It was everyone around the horse. He, when Susan was talking about she rode the horse and it stopped in the barn and threw her off, he said, <laughs> he, she said, that horse was crazy. He says, the horse wasn't crazy. Everybody at the hell house trying to ride the horse was crazy. <laughs> I'll probably go along with that one. Horses, horses will, they'll, they'll test you that you, if somebody will get on a horse's back and the horse will test you, the horse will act up and, and, you know, and, and, and after about three or four people, you get up there and it acts up a little bit and the people get off the, the horse realizes, oh, if I just act up, they'll get the hell off of me, you know? Yeah. The horse gets smart like that. Yeah. You let the horse know I ain't getting off of you. He'll. He'll straighten out. I know. Uh, <laughs> I went out to Hawaii and I rode this these horses, and it was pretty cool. It was Kauai actually, and we rode the horses on the beach and down the trail up the cliffs. And you know the horses were pretty docile, but they were like riding right on the edge of this cliff. And then um, when we started back, they know they get to eat, you know, and they get to saddle off. And that damn horse was running, man through those cliffs and I thought I was going to die. I swear I thought I was going to die. And, and, those, but they knew, you know, they knew where they were going. You didn't even have to steer them or anything. And it was miles and miles of riding. Um, and they started running and you had to hold on because you didn't hold on. Your ass was going to fall off. Um, but it was really fun riding them on in the beach and the water and all of that stuff. Uh, Ronnie, uh, Parker, Craig, do you recall the reaction the guys in the band had when Elvis died? No, that, that was like August. That was like August of 77. That was yeah. right before the plane crash. Uh, no, uh, El uh, Gary, Gary was, a, you know, really, uh, a secret Elvis admirer, <laughs> I think, you know, I used to always kid about get with Gary about Elvis and take him all the, uh, during, I remember he was, uh, somewhere where Bob Hope was. And he said, wow, there's Bob Hope. You know, I like Bob Hope. I guess they were doing like a, some kind of a, um, uh, a thing for the, uh, servicemen and, um, he said that, uh, he went over to say hi to Bob Hope, you know, and he said, yeah, I'm Gary Rossing from Leonard Skinner. And Bob Hope goes, oh, wow. You're the guys that were in the plane crash. Yo, I know you, Gary. And Gary was like, you know who I am? <laughs> you know, oh, wow. That's cool. Huh? <laughs> yeah. And he said, Bob, he goes, and then Dale was, Krantz was there while he was telling the story. He goes, well, I'm not trying to sound vain or anything. And she goes, no, no, you don't sound vain. You know, that's. I was just, I was just happy that Bob Hope knew who I was. So, <laughs> so he said he That'd loved be pretty Bob cool. Hope. Yeah. Uh, 
Steve Jones says it's funny how uh, Susan doesn't realize how those guys grew up to influence millions of people. I don't really think Susan really knows how popular <laughs> Leonard Skinner is. Do you correct? Because that's what Chad said. Yeah, there's uh yeah, yeah, there's uh I don't know. Yeah, there's, she. Uh, not you know. everybody considers them to be renowned you know i mean you know not everybody considers me to be the world's most famous roadie in the since in the dawn of time since the dinosaurs roamed the earth you know it's just you know, just a select few of facebook people you know <laughs> i tell you what man you know, with it. <laughs> it's like when i go on the road you know and i go to interview somebody and never fails just about every time when I walk in the bar, as soon as I walk in and you guys can probably uh, testify to that. If you watch the podcast, cause when I walk in, there's a Leonard Skinner song on and I'll go, there we go again. Another Leonard Skinner songs playing. It did it when I went to interview, uh, Joey Davis. And that kind of freaked me out as soon as I walked in, it just so many times it's happened. But if you think about it, you know, you can go in Walmart and you'll hear a Leonard Skinner song. You can go into like down here. We have a, um, a shopping center called Publix and you go in there, you'll hear Leonard Skinner in there. No matter where you go, you know, it's, you turn on the radio long enough, there's going to be a Skinner song coming on. And, uh, a lot of times, um, I'll hear, uh, what's your name? I heard what's your name today, as a matter of fact. And that's why I asked the question because I was like, you know, I ought, to, I ought to talk to Craig a little bit more about how that happened. And, and, uh, I re I rewound it a couple well, I didn't rewind it. I just clicked it back and listened to it again a few times so I could kind of like get the gist of, uh, what Ronnie was thinking. And then I went on Wikipedia and, uh, which is, uh, nothing we really did before was dissect, uh, how that came about and, and, you know, Craig has always spoke of it just a little bit, but um, it's it's nice to know the full story, the back story on that. Uh, but yeah, Skinner and music, man. We have a we I have know. a talk radio station here that doesn't play music, but God, three four times every day they'll they'll go to 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 talk about something or 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 something and they'll and they'll do they'll do a Skinner song to do an intro of what they're talking about or whatever they'll play a little Leonard Skinner clip they're always they do that oh god three or four times every day there but you know you know but they you know they they do it frequently with with Leonard Skinner more than other you know uh, uh, bands or whatever you know it's kind of cool um, RH says, uh, when Griff says everyone wants to see Craig's ex. Yeah. I think that's what, uh, a lot of people, like when we said we were going to bring Craig's ex on, they were wanting to see her and they didn't realize there's a lot of people in here thought she's a good looking woman, you know? Um, and she is, she's still a very good looking woman. Um, and she was really pretty hot back then craig you had good taste man you had good taste <laughs> <laughs> not trying to talk about your uh your wife craig and chad your mom but you know she's a pretty good looking gal um amelin uh says uh susan was great and you both still look good so she's saying you look good too craig so um hats off to both of you and you don't really have a lot of wrinkles, man. You could be all wrinkled up, you know. And I mean, look at that. <laughs> for what I've been through, I can, I think I look pretty good for what I've put myself through. Yeah, and you're not fat. Ever, ever smoked cigarettes, you know, and that's what really gives you the wrinkles, though. So. Okay, moving right along. Latanya Burden says Susan is beautiful, and she um, and uh, she loves that you guys still get along. She would love to see Susan come back on the show. Yeah, well, a lot of people were kind of complaining about the not being able to hear her. And um, but then again, a lot of people said they could hear. If you put some earbuds in, I think you'll be able to hear her better because I heard somebody mention that. Um, but it is what it is. We couldn't hardly help it. 
uh, you know, it's, it was a laptop with bad reception and, and you could hear me and Craig pretty good, but, uh, yeah, there was some <coughs> issues there. Homer Hancock. Actually, actually my, my fifth wife is the one that kind of initiated that. And then I, and I, I, I contacted her and I goes, yeah, me, we, I did that thing with, with Sue. And then, uh, she was on her way to work and she wrote me back and said, uh, uh, she wasn't going to be able to watch it then, but she'd watch it later. But uh, we had to think about having her ha after after people commented, but made comments about it. We needed to think about having her having her back on. And I thought, well, that's not going to happen. And then I I told Chad, and Chad said, actually, said she she said she'd have a good time. And actually, if we did it again, we'd have it at at my place, and the and the uh, connection would be better. So. You know, maybe we'll maybe we we'll, we can set it up and do, to do another uh, another one where we're more prepared this time. Yeah. Yeah. There you have it. Yeah, I, that would be cool. Uh, give her maybe. give her time to think. It's like, you know, you have to do a couple of these. Anybody does before you kind of go. Wow, we could have. You know, I could have talked about this or this or that. You know, once you do one, you you kind of reflect on what you could have talked about. So you give her time to think about it, you know, and what, you know, what it's all about, because you need, you know, if you've never done one of these, you need, you know, you, you're kind of, you know, don't know what, what it's all about, you know, and once you do one, you go, wow, okay, that's what it's about. We could have talked about this, that, or the other thing, think of some things, but she, I guess Chad said she had a good time doing it. Uh, Craig, your phone's beeping or something there. You know, I got an idea. Um, how about get Kathy Godsey to have her on the cat on the, on the Saturday night special. Kathy could, you know, have her on there. and That would be a little bit of a different spin. Maybe we could do that. Um, Homer Hancock, if there was no kitchen in the hell house, then how did you boil the mushroom tea? Uh, well, like a caveman, you just build a fire and boil water. <laughs> <laughs> I remember back when we, uh, we got mushrooms, what we would do. Craig, you remember a can of Sterno? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. We would get, we would go down to the, I don't know remember what store would you get it at Sears or something. And we would get Sterno and we would boil our, our mushroom tea out in the woods you know, we would just go because you had to hide while you did it, and uh, we would go pick the mushrooms and clean them off and boil them right out there in the woods on some sterno in a pot, an old camp pot. Uh, which yeah, you can figure out, man. When it comes to doing drugs and stuff, you can figure anything out, man. Rock on says, uh, not trying to be disrespectful to uh, Chad or Craig, but Susan looks awesome. <laughs> yeah i say the same thing jeff says it would be really cool if craig and susan got back together oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh hey, let me see here um uh yeah somebody uh kitty says uh I wish somebody would have miked Susan hard to hear her. Couldn't see Chad well either, but thanks for having her on. And yeah, that was, uh, that was something I said at the beginning of the podcast was that we were going to, uh, try to get through it, but it was going to be an issue. Um, Oh, South VA Ronnie says, uh, I, I normally never see commercial breaks, but this time there were about six commercial breaks. Does that mean it was monetized? I didn't watch this one back, but, uh, I guess there was a bunch of commercial breaks during that one. Craig, the last, the last one did get monetized. Yeah. Maybe that's how we know, uh, whether or not we're getting monetized. If there's a lot of commercial breaks, I wonder, <laughs> I wonder why we don't get commercial breaks on some and some we do which is a good uh a good point there thanks for that uh i'm gonna start uh checking on that 
And then uh, last question. Uh, nice to have Jeff says, nice to have Susan on. Maybe next time when you have a bad connection, have them call in. Well, if they do that, we don't have, we're not like set up with a, like some kind of a board where you call into a board. What I do is like when Gene Odom calls in, I just hold the phone up to the microphone and let Gene talk or whoever, but I could do that. So, uh, yeah, that's no problem. Uh, yeah, we could do that. So that's all the uh, questions and comments. And I guess it's time to do the drawing, Craig. You all set up, man. <laughs> I dropped the mouse and of course it went under my chair. So I couldn't get to it. <laughs> oh boy. So anyway. Yeah, yeah. What are, what are we going to be giving away this time? I guess we're going to give away one of them fishing lures. I don't know. Fishing lure, a coin. Yeah. And a, and a Craig on heroin picture. And a kazoo. And a kazoo. Yeah. That's what everybody's getting a kazoo and a Craig on heroin picture and a, and uh, besides, coin. What, coin. besides the coin and whatever else you're uh, supposed to get, uh, well, while we're on that, while we're on that subject, I said uh, that George was the one that didn't. Uh, I didn't have his info on the. Oh God. <laughs> I said I didn't have his info on the kazoo, but I was wrong. It was uh, other people. Uh, yeah, George. George wanted a red kazoo, <laughs> and uh, he gets he, the fox, he gets the fox picture. So I got, I got him written down as red fox. You know, <laughs> but. Um, Latanya, I got you down for the, you won the sticker, the uh, Leonard Skinner sticker, but I don't have Latonia, Latonia, I have to keep pronouncing that wrong, but I don't have you down for a color of a kazoo, so you need to write to me and tell me what color of kazoo that you want, and uh, Mike, you said you want an orange one, and and wheelchair Chuck, you want an orange one. And George, he wants a red one. And uh, Latonia, you didn't tell me what color you wanted. And Janet Green, you get the RCB sticker. and uh, But you didn't tell me what color kazoo you want either. And if you want it signed or, or whatever. And then Donald Johnson, you won the million dollar bills. But uh, you haven't told me whether you want the kazoo, I want a kazoo, or want it signed, or what color you want. And uh, Robert Gillen, that's Altavor. He wants a blue kazoo. And then uh, Jerry Dodson, he's last last week. He wants an orange kazoo. And uh, yeah, so. Uh, so Donald, you need to write, tell me what color you want. And Janet, you need to tell me what color you want. And Latonia, you need to tell me what color you want. And then I'll get these sent out. So yeah, you're holding, you're holding everybody else up. Yeah. I'm, I'm like a Democrat. It's that's all this is my fault, but I'm going to blame it on y'all. <laughs> Craig just needs an excuse not to do it. I'm that's like a I'm Democrat. Is. I'm going to blame it on y'all. <laughs> <laughs> even though it's my yeah that's what they do yeah, yeah that's they, what they do i'm a democrat today yeah yeah you're a liberal <laughs> so yeah so and we you got, got and you have an insurrection going on behind you right there so what the hell <laughs> oh yeah there's there's something weird going on with the financial thing i guess the, the petrodollar the there's something about going on with the Federal Reserve. Uh, yeah, they're the, talking about banks failing now. And the pet, the petrodollar, they made a deal in like 1913 that the, with the Federal Reserve and the, and some kind of deal with um, 
and the oil companies and uh, they came up with this this fa- fantasy uh federal reserve thing so they could control the to the uh monetiz- uh, the the money flow and everything's been going off the US dollar but and that and it was based on it was petro some petro thing and that all that ends on um june 11th which is just in a couple days so uh shit might just starting to be hit the fan here pretty soon if but you know i don't know it's just yeah and, warning and, uh, warning danger danger yeah. <laughs> a lot of stuff going on you know escalating yeah. over there and the war is escalating and just uh stay tuned because it's going to be It's crazy. It's going to be some bad stuff coming down. You heard it here first on the stoned roadie. They've got it all written. What they want, they're going to do all these globals, these billionaires that are controlling everything right now, but it's all been written out for a long time. This, this stuff's been planned for years. It's just, they're just planning this takeover. Now it's, 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 uh, they get away with it this time. We're all in trouble. Well, what they do is they, they have a whole list of things that they can use and they, they do them one at a time. If, uh, if the first thing doesn't work, they use the next one and they throw shit on the wall and see what sticks is basically what they do. And if they have to do another COVID thing, they'll do it. I mean, you got to admit the world's kind of mentally insane. I mean, their mental illness is kind of really kind of out of control right now i mean just look around my god <laughs> i mean if you can't see it you must be part of it's all i can say i i kind of um judge the way things are going by the line at mcdonald's you can tell who's still ignorant by the line <laughs> at mcdonald's if the line at mcdonald's is long then you still got a bunch of ignorant people because if you're eating <laughs> mcdonald's you, you you don't know what's going on <laughs> in my biased opinion pretty much yeah that's uh yeah yeah they're all i don't know man it's they're putting some weird stuff in food but anyways there's the the people there 167 we're up to there's all the final people that have been okay i see you make that drawing 67s we're up to that many people and uh yeah so let's do the drawing here. <sighs> let's shake it up, baby, now. <laughs> All right. I actually think the coolest thing is the coin that was on the plane that you get the letter of authenticity. That, to me, that's just the coolest. Well, you get the coin this time too, right? Well, I know, oh, well but, yeah, but the, yeah, that's, yeah, to me, that's I don't the have point. that many coins. Like, there's a hundred and hundred and uh, sixty-seven of them in here. I wouldn't even be able to lift a hundred and sixty-seven coins. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who we got here? Uh, uh, hold it right there, forty-eight. 48 48 wow number that's 48. a low number yeah it's a low number who's number 48 huh 48 48 48 he knows who he is or she or whoever or she or or they or they them <laughs> 48 let's see Oh, mercy, mercy. Oh, God. Oh, the suspense, huh? Of course, it's going to be the last page. Drum roll, please. Uh, oh, come on. (laughs) 
These pages are sticking together. Well, there. they know who they are. If they're All right, them. here we go. Oh, you ain't going to believe this. Oh, no way. Who is it? Uh, hold it down lower. Homer Hancock. That guy, he, he mentioned how he always wins. <laughs> yeah, he always... He says, man, I win stuff. I've been winning stuff my whole life. <laughs> man, you need to go get a lottery ticket there. How's Homer. his number? How, how does his name come up here recently, Homer? Yeah. I thought he know, did it here recently, Homer. Um, he's a lucky good. sucker. He's just a lucky sucker, I guess. With the Homer. Homer's a winner. Yeah. Congratulations. Homer Hancock. <laughs> I think he asked a question tonight or something. I remember you mentioned his name a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he's always he's always uh commenting. He's a he deserves it, you know. He's always commenting on the podcast and yeah, he's a he's a a, a big participant in the uh Stone Roadie podcast. So so uh and Craig didn't cheat. Yeah, he says uh, his comment was, if there was no kitchen in the hell house, then how did you uh, boil the oh, mushroom? Yeah, too? how did we make, get the water hot? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think we had a hot plate out there. I think there was a hot plate. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's what so Joe uh, Crimp told or, me. Coffee or tea or whatever, yeah. 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 What, yeah, I remember we had a hot plate out there. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So, All right. Happy trails. I guess we. That's a. I guess that's about it, huh? That's a wrap. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Let me see if I can. I hope this mouse works. Yeah, it works. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't find that sucker anywhere. I don't know how it fell backwards. Well, it must have been a wireless. <laughs> so, anyways, okay, let me see here. Mine has a wire on it. Now, why can't I end that thing from there? Oh, there it is. All right, I want to find the buttons before I do this. <laughs> All righty, then. Happy trails to you. Until we meet again, happy trails to you. Keep token until then. See you later, alligator. At the wild crocodile. And that's a wrap. Cut. Happy trails to you. Until Happy trails to you, keep token until then.